What a message. No matter what the world or people may say, you are a child of God. There are people that have never heard that. Who don't think they're worthy. Boy, we need to share that message every day. Life can change quickly. A week ago Saturday, I think most of us saw or read at some point with troubled hearts about the tragedy in Stillwater, Oklahoma. People gathered for a parade, rejoicing about life. Homecoming. And then all of a sudden, a car crashes through a barricade. Lives are lost. Altered forever. And in what is almost unreal, People are now parading by to offer condolences. Few of us will ever know this kind of pain. The pain of losing someone so tragically and suddenly. Sadly, some of you know this pain. And our hearts continue to hurt for you, even though perhaps it's been years. But eventually, all of us will know the pain of loss from death. We don't escape that. Today, we remember and reflect on those who have died And in doing so, some of the pain resurfaces. But hopefully, hopefully healing is present as well. Today we remember and reflect in hopes of celebrating resurrection for those we've lost And for all of us who continue living. Anne Lamott says, You will lose someone you can't live without. And your heart will be badly broken. And the bad news is that you never completely get over the loss of your beloved. But this is also the good news. Because they live in your broken heart that doesn't seal back up and you come through. She says it's like having a broken leg that never heals perfectly, that still hurts when the weather gets cold, but you learn to dance with the limp. You learn to be blessed. In our scripture verses in John, Jesus is giving words to Mary and Martha to help them remember that they will dance. He's presented with Mary and Martha's pain and sorrow over the death of their brother and Jesus' friend Lazarus. And Jesus is met, I love how it starts, because he's met by Martha before he even gets to the house. And when she sees him, it's not, thank you for coming. I really appreciate your visit. I feel better now that you're here. It is, where were you? It's about time. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. In other words, where were you, God? Why weren't you here when I needed you? 
Why didn't you save my brother, or sister, or mom, or dad, or son, or daughter, or grandson, or granddaughter? But then she says, but you're here now, so do something. Do something to change the situation. And Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Of course, this is temporary. Lazarus will die again before he experiences eternal life. But Jesus raises Lazarus in order to restore hope that death doesn't have the final say in life, he raises Lazarus to show death that God has the final word and to reinforce to Mary and Martha that in the presence of Christ, death will not hold us entombed. It will not. But there's another lesson here. It's very important. Jesus' words, I am the resurrection and the life, they are spoken to Mary and Martha. And they are spoken as words of hope for the living. They're spoken as words of hope for those who have to live after someone dies. That's huge. Jesus tells Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha says, I know he will rise again at the resurrection of the last day, which would indicate that Martha had some notion of resurrection. In Jesus' day, the Pharisees had this notion, perhaps from the prophet Daniel who says in chapter 12, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life. But Martha wasn't interested in someday. She wanted Jesus to do things and to alter things now. She wanted to know how he would deal with the present reality that Lazarus had died. And Jesus says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. Do you believe this? Do you believe it? Jesus is saying, Martha, I am life. I am life now and forever. If you believe in me, you will live even though death will come. Your death or the death of a loved one. If you believe in me, life will be resurrected out of death. Barbara Brown Taylor says that we should zero in on that question Jesus asked Martha. Do you believe this? And look at the word believe. Believe comes from the word pestio, which also means trust. And she suggests that we should hear Jesus' question with the word trust instead of believe. Do you trust this? Do you trust, Martha? Do you trust that I am the resurrection? Rob Fuquay, who wrote this series, The God We Can Know, says this puts a different spin on it. He says there's a difference between believing in something and trusting in it. He says if we truly believe someone, then we are able to put our trust fully in that person. Do we trust that Jesus will bring bring resurrection out of death? Do we trust that out of death, New possibilities, new experiences, new life will emerge. And we must remember the miracle of resurrection only occurs because of death. Easter occurs not in spite of death, but because of it. 
The Christian faith offers hope because it faces death squarely and moves through it. It doesn't try to go around it. Fuquay says we should also know there's a difference between resurrection and resuscitation. Resurrection is bringing new life. Resuscitation is bringing back to life. His heart stopped and they resuscitated him. Her breathing stopped and they resuscitated her. Resurrection means a whole new life, a different life. But he says too often what we want from Jesus or God is resuscitation, not resurrection. We want God to fix it, to make it like it was. And that's not resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection, not I am the resuscitation. I am the life that comes through the death. And Jesus, in essence, resuscitated Lazarus, but of course it was temporary. He would die again, and Mary and Martha would experience pain, but this time they would face death trusting in the resurrection. And for those of you who have experienced the pain of death, I pray that you have come to see the power of resurrection not only for the eternal life of your beloved, but for your life. I pray that even as the pain lingers and sometimes crashes upon you like an unsuspecting wave, that you have experienced new possibilities. And in some cases, new life. In ways that have allowed you to live. Because we're still living. And that's what Jesus wants us to know. There is eternal life for those who have died and there is the life living with the promise and hope of resurrection for those of us who are living still. Roger Lovett shared with me a story called The Tree That Survived the Winter. And it's an allegory of surviving loss and living again. And listen just to the beginning of this. It says, The tree awakened earlier than usual one morning and stretched her arms towards the horizon as if to invite the early rays of dawn into her world. She shivered with delight, wiggling her roots in the muddy earth which only recently yielded its frozen hardness. She sensed something was different. Her roots seemed to be extending further and more firmly into the soil. Her arms seemed to embrace more of the world, not with the timid gestures of a sapling afraid of being tangled up with the wind, but with freedom of knowing that the wind could not topple her. And all of a sudden, the tree realized and exclaimed, I have survived the winter. I have survived the winter. There's a book called Life After Death by Skip Creighton. And it's Skip's journey, the story of he and his wife's journey through her illness and eventual death because of liver cancer. Incredible story. The story of their love, of their faith, of their journey together, of experiencing new life in the midst of this illness and an eventual death, and then he experiencing new life after her death. 
And he talks about that a few months after she had died, he kind of reluctantly decided to go with his brother and a nephew and a couple other people to a University of North Carolina and Miami football game in Miami. He just wasn't sure he wanted to go. He hadn't really done much since his wife had died. And he said, okay, I'll go. And it turned out to be an amazing trip. And he said he realized during this experience that God had put him right where he needed to be at that moment. And he realized as he was there, all of a sudden he was having a good time. And he didn't feel guilty. And then he did feel guilty for not feeling guilty. That's the way it happens. And then when he got home, he walked into the house. And he said he walked in and something was different. And it was as if his wife Jane was smiling down on him from heaven and saying, that's it. Start living. That's it. And then he said all of a sudden their dog, Little Mutt, who had been moping around just like him, came running around the corner, wagging his tail, and jumped into his arms and licked his face and hadn't done that since the death. And they stood there together realizing they were starting to live. And he said it was as if holding little mud, we were peeking around the corner at life. Jesus says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you trust this? Amen.